before you say you'll never get hurt, snap into that seatbelt habit. You know it makes sense. So before any of us say, it can't happen to me, snap into that seatbelt habit. You know it makes sense. So here in the UK we've gone from torrential downpours and localised flooding and 10 degrees to a whopping 16 degrees centigrade, 61 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a beautiful day, very sunny, very nice. Hello and welcome to Hooji Productions. So, today we're going to look at seat belts on the Morris Minor. But first, a little bit of history. Before seat belts existed in cars, an early retaining device was pioneered by English inventor George Cayley to keep pilots from falling out of gliders. In 1885, American Edward J. Claghorn actually patented the first kind of seatbelt. The intention for his model was to stop tourists from falling out of New York taxis. In 1903, French inventor Gustave Liebel invented the first two-point seatbelt for car. Now, this is the key point in history. In 1958, what we recognise as the modern three-point seatbelt was developed by Volvo engineer Niles Invar Bolin. His innovative cross strap design was both safer and easier to use than previous designs. On August the 17th, 1959, he filed patent number 3043625 in Gothenburg, Sweden. On the 13th of August, 1959, the first car with a three point seatbelt was sold. It was a Volvo PV. 544. On July the 10th, 1962, the Patent Office granted Niles Bolin of Gothenburg, Sweden, the patent for the safety belt. Interestingly, Volvo allowed its use by other manufacturers in the name of safety. In 1968, seat belts were made mandatory in UK cars, but not the wearing of them. In 1983, more seatbelt legislation was introduced and this required all drivers and front seat passengers to wear seatbelts. In 1987, rear seatbelts became a requirement on all cars. In 1989, children in the back of cars were required to wear seatbelts. And finally, in 1991, all passengers in cars were required to wear a seatbelt. So in this Morris Minor we fitted secure on inertia reel seat belts in the front. This uses the original seat belt mounting positions here and here and then they're also connected down onto the transmission tunnel back here. These ones have got quite long stalks so it went right back here. On the rear of these here we have um, reinforcement spreader plates with 7 16th UNF thread. 
The belts that fit this are the 500 slash 45s. And that's what's recommended by Securon. So in the rear of the car, we have fitted Securon 254s. And again, that's what's recommended. These are inertia reel seat belts. The, the fitment for these also have reinforcement plates underneath and the, the side ones do as well. They disappear underneath the seats. And then what we've done on the back is fed them through a seat belt guide. Hopefully you can see that. It's very bright sun in the background. And then when it comes through the seatbelt guides, it comes down and is mounted vertically. And there's a, a plate behind here, which I'll try and show in a minute. There's an aluminium spacer block put in here to allow this to come down more vertically and rub less on the guide. And in case you're wondering, this is soundproofing. I must give credit to Dan Tourney of Retro Rides for his very interesting Morris Minor Z-Tech Saloon thread. I'll put a link in the description and this is where I got inspired to fit the rear seat belts like this. And here we have the lower fixings for the rear seat belts the outside to on the inside and then on the passenger side as well so this is the side mountings underneath the car for the rear seat belt showing the reinforcement plate again The centre fixings for the rear seat belts are behind where the second wheel would go. And they're uh, quite hidden. That's, I can't see that at all. Thank you. 